Hey guys, my name is Rahul and if you are watching this video, then chances are that you might have come across RSA and AES encryption schemes. If you google the differences between them, the common results that you will get is RSA is an asymmetric cipher and AES is a symmetric cipher. RSA is slow and AES is fast. But these are quite shallow definitions. So in this video, let's figure out the important differences between the classes that they fall into that is the stream and the block ciphers. In this video, I'll be focusing on the block ciphers. So let's begin. AES is a block cipher. That is, AES breaks the plain text into chunks of blocks and then operates independently on each block. Each block is operated upon to produce its corresponding cipher text. All these cipher texts are then appended to form the complete cipher text. Now, Block ciphers are divided into two parts. First, the encryption algorithm, which as you can guess, produces the ciphertext. And secondly, decryption algorithm, which decrypts the ciphertext and produces its corresponding plain text. Since they operate on blocks, so it becomes important that the size of the plain text is a multiple of the block size. So what is this block size? For example, if the block size is 16 bytes or 128 bits, then the size of the plain text must be a multiple of 16. It could be 16, 32, 64 bytes and etc. But if it is not a multiple of the block size, then redundant or extra bits are appended to the end of the block in order to make its size a multiple of the block size. So block ciphers are not some gigantic algorithms, but just a repetition of rounds. You can either have a very strong algorithm, but a long one. Or you could have small but not so strong algorithm. But if you repeat it over and over again, it becomes quite strong. This is exactly what happens in block ciphers. Let's discuss about rounds. So they are short sequences of operations that are weak on its own but stronger when repeated over and over again. That is, it is it becomes stronger in number. It takes in a key called round key that is derived from the main key K using an algorithm called key schedule. It is important to note that these rounds are identical, but the round keys passed in as a parameter should be different and each round is constructed in a way that its inverse is possible. Let R1, R2 and Rn be the rounds taking in K1, K2 and so on up to Kn as keys. So the ciphertext becomes R3 of R2 of R1 of the plain text. Similarly, if you want to decrypt it, and get its corresponding plain text. You can use the inverse of R1 of inverse of R2 of inverse of R3 of the cipher text. Here, I haven't shown the rounds taking in the keys, but in reality, they do take in keys. Further, there could be one of the two techniques used to complete the scheme. For example, AES uses substitution and permutation network, while DES or DES uses fistal scheme. In substitution and permutation network, the bytes in a block are substituted and permutated in order to achieve its randomness. It is achieved by using something called S-boxes, which transform the input byte into something else in a non-linear fashion. Fistel scheme, on the other hand, is a bit different. You split the 64 bits into two halves, L and R, of 32 bits each. You transform L into L of XOR of FR, where F is a substitution round. Then you swap L with R and R with L. Again, you perform L XOR F of R. This gets repeated n number of times depending upon the strength you desire. Finally, you merge L and R to get 64 bit output block. So thank you guys. This is it for the block cipher. I hope you like this video. If you are new here, please make sure that you click on the subscribe button as it really motivates me to make more of such videos. Thank you.